Thank you for coming today. Actually, uh, most of you guys are uh, expecting uh, technical things for uh, KubeCon, Club Native Con, all right? Actually, I am. But uh, uh, my session is not so technical things. And that's why uh, you can take a, re take a rest and easy time. Uh, be because uh, maybe this time is uh, after lunch, right? Maybe you, some of you guys are kind of sleepy and uh, you want to guys uh, uh, take a nap. So that's why uh, you can be the cozy this, this, during this session. Uh, but uh, my session is focusing on really cultural things and uh, organizational things. So if you like it, I'd be happy. So, so my session title is Psychological Safety for Your Platform Engineering. And this is me. Uh, my name is Shinya Yanagihara. And uh, my Chinese pronunciation is not so good. Uh, maybe uh, it's, uh, may, uh, you guys are laughing. Woshi Liu Yuan Shenmi. Uh, this is my name. And uh, I'm working for uh, Boeing Japan and uh, working as a developer advocate. And my career is a kind of unique. So I'm working as for uh, middleware and platform. And that's why I'm talking about platform. But uh, uh, I'm not an infrastructure guy. So I'm always working for uh, workload on top of uh, platform, so applications. And that's why my motto is uh, uh, work for the developer experience. I am always pay attention to the application developers. That's my motto. So let me start introduction. So have you seen Hype Cycle provided Gartner? This one? This Hype Cycle was published in uh, 2022, actually last year. I can find the platform engineering as mentioned in the Hype Cycle. And this one. Next hype cycle was published in 2023, this year. In this hype cycle, you can find internal developer portal. The internal developer portal, often called IDP for short, is a platform managed by and provided by platform engineering team. Maybe you know. Now then, can you guys explain what platform engineering is? This is one definition of platform engineering, according to Gartner. The point is that it's not just engineering for an infrastructure. This mindset means uh, there is always an application and also application developers. And within this definition, the development and the use of tools, as well as importance of automation, are explained from the technical aspect as a platform engineering. And I believe you have probably seen this diagram so far. This diagram was used to illustrate platform capability in the CNCF platform white paper. Since this is a description of platform, which is central technical aspect of platform engineering you will find that lots of technical elements are listed, like uh, web portal, golden pass, the observability, data service, and something like that. Uh, as we have seen, platform engineering is engineering that is required to maintain and provide a platform for developers. So it is not surprising that lots of technical components are required. By the way, if we think of platform engineering as a platform engineering team, is the technical components alone sufficient? Do you think so? In platform engineering, not only technical aspects are important, but also the cultural and organizational aspects. It is said, uh, not only one with the other is important, but both aspects must mature. Both aspects need to support each other in order for platform engineering team to grow. 
So my talk is the session uh, is focused on cultural things, cultural aspects of platform engineering. So what would you think to be cultural aspect of platform engineering? So I have listed some of these. A lot of things, actually. Yeah, I will pick one. Are you familiar with platform as a product? Uh, this is a concept we at Bohemia have been working on since the before before uh, platform engineering became the focus is it is today. So I will introduce uh, platform as a product as rightly. I'd like you to think of the food and drinks you buy in your daily life, as well as uh, appliances uh, you use in daily life. They are advertised and branded to differentiate them from other products, right? Uh, also, there are improvements being made with uh, consumer in mind, right? The mindset of platform engineering is the same as uh, general retailing, the product. In platform engineering, we treat platform, uh, continuous platform as a typical product, like appliance, like food, like drinks. Uh, this means branding the platform as a continuously improving platform. And uh, in the context of platform engineering, the consumer becomes the application developer. You may have heard about platform as a product, as it's often talked about various uh, prices in the context of platform engineering. And platform as uh, a product is very, very popular so far. Uh, but uh, I will talk about, uh, uh, I, uh, actually, I don't talk about platform as a product today. I will talk about uh, psychological safety. Uh, if you are interested in platform as a product, uh, please talk to me if you see me at this event. So let me start uh, psychological safety. So have you heard about uh, psychological safety? Perhaps uh, some of you have heard about psychological safety. If you have attended uh, teamwork training, something like that. Psychological safety means taking risks and sharing ideas without fear of negative consequences. And uh, this psychological safety has several pairs of mindset. Here are some of these. First of all, open communications. It's really important. Uh, open communication is all about free sharing thoughts, ideas, and the consent with the run is with them. <coughs> In a psychological safe environment, uh, people feel free to speak up without worrying about criticism. This encourages honest conversations, clears up uh, misunderstandings, and uh, promote achieve listening among uh, among team members. And next, risk taking. Don't forget about risk taking. It's really really important. Risk taking means that people feel safe to pro propose new ideas, take calculated risks, and try innovative approaches without fear of negative consequences. It's about creating an environment where individuals are uh, comfortable stepping out of their comfort situation. This fosters innovation and continuous improvement. And learning culture. In the learning culture fostered by psychological safety, mistakes are seen as a chance to grow, not as a failure. Team members actively seek to learn from their experience, share insight, and adapt their approach uh, based on lessons learned. This culture prompts uh, ongoing development and personal improvement. And innovation and creativity. 
psychological safety encourages innovation and creativity by welcoming diverse perspectives and fresh ideas. In this environment, team members think creatively, question, as a que a question assumption, and work together to come up with innovative solutions. It encourages creative problem solving, uh, the, and their um, readiness to explore new and unconventional approaches. And finally, collaboration and teamwork. I love this one. Psychological safety enhances collaboration and teamwork by building trust and reducing the barriers to effective communication. Team members are more likely to share information or assistance and work together cohesively. This collaborative atmosphere enables the team to liberate each other's strengths, achieve common goals, and collectively drive success. So if you are already uh, joined the uh, psychological safety training, maybe you have seen this uh, matrix. This slide shows four different zones that represent how a safe and uh, engaged team feels. Each zone reflects different levels of comfort in your team environment. So, lowest accountability and the psychological safety zone is a it's opposite zone scored. And more or less, uh, you have the psychological safety, it's called the comfort zone. And psychological safety and uh, accountability is uh, higher, it's called a uh, running zone. And the uh, actually comfort zone has a psychological safety, but uh, this is a kind of illusion for the psychological safety. Why is uh, comfort zone is an illusion? I will uh, explain that. <clears throat> a comfort zone is a literally cozy, cozy environment because of open communication, but therefore it appears to be a really, really psychological self in terms of uh, open communication. However, they tend to avoid risk taking. As I mentioned, it's really important, which prevents uh, them from achieving challenging goals. Uh, that is why we need to aim for learning zone. So there are several reasons to avoid uh, comfort zone, like uh, complacency, missed opportunities, lack of innovation, reduced resilience, a lack of adaptability. And there are several reasons to aim for the learning zone. Right, let's take a look at it, the reasons for the zone. A continuous improvement, the learning zone uh, makes us want to keep getting better all the time. It pushes us to try new things, experiment with different ways of doing stuff, and learn from when things work and uh, or don't work. This helps us keep improving and come up with new ideas. And next one, adaptability. In a world that's always changing, right? It's important to be able to adapt anything. The running zone helps us to be open to change, not get too worried about things being uncertain and be okay with new situation. Being able to adapt like this is uh, really important to stay competitive and up to date. And innovation. The running zone makes us think creatively and try out new ideas. It lets us uh, question what we assume is true, challenge how things are usually done, and help come up with new and smart question. And the resilience, people in the running zone become tough, 
because they are used to dealing with uh, tough stuff, difficult uh, situation and difficult problems. And running from when things don't go well, things uh, toughness helps them uh, handle problems better and come back strong after failures. So, as I, as I have told, uh, just mentioned, I hope you now understand that it's better to aim for running zone uh, rather than comfort zone. Running zone is better. Now, let's take a look at the great state of the affairs uh, for the running, zone, running zones for the platform engineering. Uh, first of all, adaption to technology advances. In platform engineering, technology changes quickly, right? If platform engineers have a running zone, they can keep up with the newest tools and methods. This means uh, the platform stays up to date and can work with new technologies. Next, innovation and creativity. Platform engineering is about solving tricky problems. The running zone makes uh, platform engineers think in new and creative ways. This helps them come up with uh, fresh solutions that makes their um, platform better and more user-friendly. And continuous improvement. Platforms always need to get better. The running zone makes platform engineers want to keep finding ways to make things work even smoother and faster. It helps them make the platform better, uh, keep it safe, and make it work more efficiently. And user-centric design. Good platform engineering means focusing on users. So it's a developers. The running their mindset tells platform engineers to pay attention when the users say what they want, be flexible when needs chance, and make a platform for developers. And complex solving. Platform engineering can mean dealing with really tough stuff. The running zone helps. Platform engineers face these challenges like problem solvers. It will encourage them to find new ways and tools to solve tough problems. And risk management. Comfort zone might make people lazy, but the running zone says it's okay to take some risks. Platform engineers can try out new technology or ways of doing things, knowing that uh, if they make a mistake, it's a chance to get better and learn something new. And cross-functional collaboration. The running zone encourages the platform engineer to work closely with uh, developers, operation guides, and security experts, and uh, the others, other people. Together, they create solutions uh, that cover all the base and meet everyone's needs. The resilience in the face of the change. Platform engineers deal with the shift in the technology, business needs, and industry trends. The running zone helps platform engineers stay tough in the face of uh, these changes. So the platform keeps saving the organization well. The future proofing. By creating a running zone, organizations pre prepare the, their platform engineer for the future. This mindset helps platform engineer foresee and welcome changes, making sure the platform stays flexible and ready to tackle with new challenges. As you see now, environment of psychological safety in the running zone can have a variety of effects on the platform engineering. 
Now, as I mentioned, platform engineering and the psychological safety, especially the state of the learning zone, a great match. Now, platform engineering is about making uh, software developer more, more efficient. And it consistently uh, changes as well, technology advances. The learning zone encourages you to learn and try new things. Uh, that's why right. uh, it's perfect for keeping platform engineering up to date and optimal. So they work really well together. So now speaking of running them, have you heard about a running organization? It's a Peter Singer's concept. A uh, running organization is detailed with uh, his book, uh, The Fifth Discipline. Uh, the book told the like following. Um, a running organization is an organizational entity that fosters an environment in which people at all levels continuously learn, adapt, and grow to enhance performance and achieve goals. A learning organization is characterized by several key principles. It's uh, system thinking, personal mastery, mental models, shared vision, and team running. And the, the running organization concept runs well with platform engineering due to the nature of the field. Continuous running, system of thinking, the innovation, the collaboration, adaptability. So I will talk about uh, one of them, a system of thinking. A platform engineering often requires understanding the interconnectedness of the various components, complex components. System thinking helps teams understand how different technology interact within the platform. Now, I will talk about uh, system thinking later. Now, I'm sure uh, most of you have seen this chart, right? Uh, this is a, a CNCF Cloud native landscape. As you see, it is really exciting how many tools are displayed, right? The, on the other hand, some of you might say, are too many tools. It's so complicated, right? Actually, I can say it's uh, kind of complicated. I think so. But now, do you remember the platform white paper by CNCF provided, uh, I mentioned, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, this, uh, my session, in many cases, the tools listed in the cloud native landscape will be uh, combined to create a platform. Uh, that's why we should think about running organization for platform engineering as well. So like uh, rapid technology changes, complex ex uh, ecosystems, innovation and experiment, knowing sharing, energy sharing, the continuous improvement, or lots of aspects. So now I will talk about our uh, system of thinking as right way. So you've already seen learning organization has uh, several key principles, as I mentioned. One of them is uh, system of thinking. Now let's take a look at it. But uh, system of thinking is uh, the kind of discipline of the way of thinking. And that's why uh, it's kind of difficult to explain it uh, with just one slide and for the rest of the time. So today, I just uh, like you to know that there are several approaches to system thinking. System thinking is an approach that recognizes interconnectedness and interdependence among the various elements the, within the complex systems. The emphasis is on the viewing the system as a whole rather than as isolated parts understanding how the components interact, then they're recognizing that changes in one part can affect an entire system. There are lots of components, and there I will uh, pick up some. Holistic perspective. System thinking includes looking uh, beyond individual components and understanding their uh, relationship 
in the broader context of the entire system. And next one, interconnectedness. It emphasizes that in everything is connected and the changes in one area can impact other, other areas of unexpected ways. And next one, feedback loops. System thinking explores feedback loops within the system when, uh, where actions and uh, reactions will influence each other, leading dynamic behavior. I will deep dive this one. Next slide. I told you this uh, system thinking has a, a kind of a looping system, a looping thinking. So this is a visualization of the system thinking. It's called loop diagram. It's a uh, illustrates uh, interrelationship. One loop uh, in the uh, loop diagram, it's a reinforcing loop in which uh, one event has a strong influence on subsequent events. So on the other hand, uh, there is another loop, uh, the balancing loop, which acts uh, to restore the affected state of the original state. This example, uh, consider efforts to enhance the performance of microservices, like uh, uh, support, uh, service microservice has uh, become overloaded and is no longer performing. But uh, maybe uh, and, uh, when you have the trouble, maybe uh, we, you will uh, configure the, some of them. But the uh, event happens something and effects. So you must think about the kind of the loop diagram. But remember, this loop diagram is really, really simple. Usually, uh, loop diagram is more complicated especially cloud-native things, cloud-native technologies, and ecosystem like Kubernetes. So this is a kind of the slightly more complex loop. It could be a nested loop uh, with uh, connected uh, reinforcing loop by balancing loop, and uh, reinforcing loop grouping all these loops together. So if you, uh, as I mentioned, if you start thinking about Kubernetes, it ecosystem in the loop diagram uh, displayed like this. So let's say, imagine the component as appears here, uh, Kubernetes cluster, monitoring observability tools, deployment strategies, and uh, resource management, containerization, developer feedback loop, and let's uh, imagine some possible loop from uh, these components for reinforcing loop, containerization loop. Uh, containerization loop uh, enables consistency and portability of applications. This positively impacts resource utilization and deployment strategies by providing a standardized environment. And the uh, developer feedback loop Effective communication and feedback changes between developers and operations it helps in resolving issues and improving application performance within the cluster. And that's a reinforcing loop. The next one, the uh, balancing loop. Restore, uh, resource uh, optimization loop. Proper resource management ensures effects use of cluster resources. If resource utilization is too high or too low, adjustment can be made to optimize performance and cost effectiveness. The next one, deployment strategy loop. Different deployment strategies impact resource usage application performance by carefully uh, selecting the, and fine tuning development strategies Organization can strike a balance between stability and agility. In this way, it is important to take into account the various uh, interrelationship and their actions and reactions in, the, in the complex cloud-native systems. 
The systems thinking loop diagram is a variable choice in the context of platform engineering for several reasons. So there are the reasons. Actually, one of these has a um, detailed reason uh, explanation, but uh, we don't have the rest of, uh, enough time. So if you are interested in the, this uh, explanation, uh, after this session, please talk to me. So I hope that you have found system thinking useful in platform engineering. I told you that psychological safety is important in the session, uh, the beginning of the session. Uh, do you think system thinking can help with psychological safety? I can say the answer is yes. You can imagine how well these two uh, go together, given the relationship between learning zones and learning organization. So like uh, understanding interconnected factors, system thinking encourage people to look at the uh, bigger picture and uh, see how different things are connected. When it comes to psychological safety, this approach helps us understand how various factors like uh, how we con communicate, how our teams work together, how our leaders uh, behave, and overall culture of organization all interact. By understanding this connection, we can figure out that might be causing issues with psychological safety and work on fixing them in comprehensive way. And next one, uh, it's a root causes. Think of system of thinking like a uh, detective looking for clusters. Uh, when it comes to psychological safety, this approach helps us dig deeper to find out why there might be problems. Instead of just dealing with obvious signs, like people not feeling safe to speak, uh, uh, we try to figure out that's causing these issues in the first place. It's like getting to the root of the problem. By doing this, organization can make smarter chance the real fix things the long term. And the open communication. System thinking is like uh, being detective for how we talk to each other. When it comes to the psychological safety, it helps us uh, look at how, how information moves around in our organization. We check to see if there are any problems that stop uh, people from sharing the, their thoughts and their ideas openly. Once we find these issues, we can come up with plans to make sure everyone can talk more freely and honestly. It's all about making communication better so people feel safer to speak up. Actually, I have, uh, we have some uh, reason, uh, explanation, right? The two more, three more. The, the rest of the time is not enough, so I will skip it. But uh, let me explain this one. I, will, I, I love this. Encouraging collaboration. System thinking is like saying that we are all in this together when it comes to psychological safety. This approach helps us to see that we need different people with different ideas to solve problems. It's like having a bunch of experts from different fields work together on a puzzle. When we include lots of different perspectives, we can come up with uh, better solutions and really make sure our environment is safe and welcoming uh, for everyone. So this is the takeaway. So uh, for this session, as I told you, the 
value of psychological safety to platform engineering has open communication, risk taking, learning culture, and innovation and collaboration. And the value of system thinking to platform, uh, platform engineering has complexity management, feedback loops, the root cause analysis, adaptability, and optimization. And in summary, psychological safety creates an environment where teams can communicate openly, take risks, learn, innovate, and collaborate effectively. The system of thinking complements this by providing a structured approach to managing complexity, identifying feedback loops, analyzing root cause, adapting to change, and optimizing pro platform engineering processes. Together, these concepts contribute to advancement and success of platform engineering efforts. The technical aspects are naturally important for the platform engineering because platform engineering deals with a variety of technical things, technology and tools. However, it is really important not to forget that the team that is psychological safety and capable of effective learning will be able to leverage technology more efficiently. That's all I have today. Thank you so much.